I'm Rohit and uh, today I'll be looking at a game that I made and this basically I've implemented the chess system that we can find in uh, games like uh, Clash Royale and stuff. So it's basically it's like a uh, main player uh, completes some levels or uh, does some objectives, right? So he is able to get some chess in, in the form of a reward. So these chess can then be opened uh, either by uh, uh, over time either over time or by spending some gems and by opening this chest you can then get uh, some randomized rewards from the chest so this is basically uh, the chest uh, system so we'll just uh, play it for once and then we'll look at the architecture that i made so you have the currency so the coins and the gems so these are the two uh, things you can like get rewards and use for opening the chest so when I click on get chest, I get uh, one of like a uh, random chest, right? One of uh, four chests in this case. So here it's uh, logged and it's legendary, right? So the chest is a legendary, but it's logged. And uh, when I click on it, I'll be uh, able to either unlock it for free uh, over a period of time, that is three minutes here, or uh, unlock it with gems, right? And uh, it's three minutes i'll just skip it for now we'll look for something uh, okay we have a uh, epic rare and rare oh, cool so rare is a little bit uh, less time consuming so it's 30 seconds so we'll go with this for now but if i go for uh, unlock with gems it uh, it requires one gems right but i don't have one gem so if i click on one like buy with one gem unlock with one gem it should say insufficient gems so i can just go and unlock it for free so now I'll have to either wait for 30 seconds or I can at any point of time during its time of unlock, I can uh, click on it and I can unlock it with uh, whatever is given in here. So I still can't unlock it uh, because I don't have the gems. And if I try to unlock any other thing, uh, it wouldn't unlock. Instead, it would be put in a queue. So I'll show that uh, in a second. Let's see what happens when uh, it just unlocks okay so the chest has now unlocked and you are uh it shows that it's it's asking you to open right so you can click on open and it'll show a bunch of uh, rewards that you have received and you can collect it and those will be added to your uh, currency and that just should like uh, it, it would remove itself right so now you can uh either get chest and uh put another chest in here so get chest and that slot would be filled if i give get chest again it would say that all slots are full because there are only four, four slots right so let's go for uh, this one and uh, let me unlock this now right so i am unlocking and i'm waiting for this to unlock and at that time of uh, period i can choose chess and put them in a queue so for right now uh, the queue has a length of two chests so i can put two chests in queue and uh, i can't put another one so queue is full right now but essentially what this is is even i can't put the same chest again so this is already queue so essentially what this is is when the chest unlocks it would automatically unlock start unlocking the next chest that is in the queue right so now this one unlocked and is uh, asking me to open and this since it was in queue this would uh, start unlocking automatically right so i can open this uh, and this one uh, i have one gems right so I can uh, buy it with one gem so you see it's 58 and when i click it it uses up on uh, one of the gems and now it has opened and since this was was in the queue uh, this has started unlocking right so i can collect uh yeah i can add this to queue or i can like uh, i can add this to queue, right? so add this and this one has started on unlocking so that's basically the entire uh thing so Basically, you run unlock chests and get the rewards, right? Cool. Uh, let's look at the uh, code base and uh, the stuff that I have used. So this is the scene, uh, the game scene, and this has a bunch of uh, canvas stuff. So our title, uh, the different pop-ups, uh, the uh, unlock with gems and uh, unlock pop-up. So different pop-ups. And this canvas is being managed by the game UI manager. So I've used a bunch of uh, serialized fields to match each of the uh, pop-ups and the 
counters and stuff right and then we have the chess spawner so this is what is responsible for uh, creating the chess and uh, maintaining chess right so i have two in the queue length and the number of starts at the four so we'll just look at uh, chess service and currency manager so i have also have a service for the currency so let's look at uh, currency service first cool so currency service uh two private uh, variables coins and gems and uh, at the start of the game i set it to whatever is the base and uh, yeah i used e events to update the whole uh, ui right so everything that happens in the ui is being updated and uh, like ev every stuff is being handled by events and that's what is happening here so add coins will add the number of coins to the coin count remove coins will do the same but it has a return type of bool so if there isn't any like uh, if if there isn't the required uh, coins or gems right and then i would return false uh, but if it if there is some like gems that would uh, that can be used then it would just uh, subtract it from the coin uh, coin count and gem count so this is a simple uh, currency service uh, manager and uh, so that's about currency then we look at uh, the chests so for chest i have uh, used scriptable objects to uh, create some different chests and just uh, views so if we look at just scriptable object okay so it has a public uh, chest type variable it has min coins max coins min gems xm so the idea is whenever the chest is being opened a random value between these two uh, uh, variables would be selected for the coins and this for the gems so the user like whoever is designing the game can just go to the scriptable objects and click on a chest and then uh, modify the values that's needed right and then time to open so time to open is the time required uh, in this case it's uh, seconds right so that's the time required that would take it to unlock so that's time to open and finally we have the chest prefab so chest prefab is what uh, contains the view so whatever we see here is uh, instance of the chess prefab right so we look at that uh, prefabs chess prefabs common chess so if you look at common chess uh, it has a chess image and a name uh, then it has three panels so locked locked uh, unlocking and then finally open so open has that uh, animation uh, which blinks right so that's basically common chess and epic chess legendary and rare so each of these has their own uh, chess view script and all these chats so we look at this in a minute so this is what scriptable object consists of uh, the chess type the chess prefab uh, with the chess view and uh, these variables right and i have a chess uh, scriptable object list so whenever a new chess is being added we can just add it to this uh, scriptable object list and that will be used in our chess spawner right so let's go to our chess spawner so the chess spawner contains the chess service so that's what we'll be looking at so for the chess i will make use of the mvc pattern and uh, yeah so chess type uh, there are four chess types for now and uh, i've created some object pools for each uh, chess type and yeah so basically when you are creating a chess i'll be uh, sending an event so let's go to game ui manager right so when i'm creating a like this button if you see uh, get chest get chest is being mapped to create chest so if you go to create chest it sends an event to uh, invoke uh, on create chest right so if we go to on create chest so on create chest is being uh, is called it will call uh, create random chest and uh, basically it will have a transform for the chest holder so 
since each test uh, this is how I have uh, arranged it so these are chest holders four chest holders right now and whenever HS view is being pre like when the prefab is being instantiated it would uh, come in as a child of this chest holder right so for now all these four are empty because they don't have any child but if I go to chest prefab and drag and drop a chest holder like if into the chest holder it would take like it would take that space right and I can do the same for the other chests right so this is how I am uh, like maintaining the chests and uh, putting them in the right order right so yeah so create random chest it would uh, see if all the slots are full so if all the slots are full then I would invoke the service right and uh, right then create chest and right so we we'll look at this create chest create chest basically it will take the scriptural object and uh, it will go to the chest pool and get that particular uh, item and then it would uh, add it to the chest controllers list right so we we'll look at chest pool in a minute so basically we are getting a chest pool or creating a chest uh, we are creating the chest controller and returning it and then adding it to the list of controllers chest controllers and uh, destroy chest so destroy does the same so when we want to destroy a chest we want to uh, return that chest controller to the object pool and then remove it from the chest controllers right so that's what is happening here and when i am creating the chest i'll enable it and when i am destroying the chest i'll disable it right so it's basically like uh, the same mvc stuff that we have been seeing uh, then i'll show you the chest controller cool so chest controller this is how i'm creating uh, basic normal stuff so chest view and model are being created and then the controllers are being assigned and uh, yeah so just normal chess controller stuff just model uh, the all data is being uh, collected here so because i am uh, making use of just rewards in the later period i have created a public class and i am storing that class as uh, the variable right and when i am calling the constructor i am assigning the values to the variables of that class right so that's what is happening here then finally chess view so chess view as the image holder the uh, image holder is basically the image uh, ui and chess type and both the sprites for the chess opened and closed images and then i have the lock panel unlocked panel unlocking panel and the open panel and then in queue text uh, the timer text the number of gems text and basically all the different states right uh, yeah so that's basically it then we can also go, go on a look at the chess state so this is what uh, changed the state and uh, when I'm asking in a new state the oldest if it checks whether that's the current test state and if there is then it will uh, on ex right exit it will call that method and it will assign the new chest state and it will call the on state enter and update uh, for the current chest state it would call the tick every so anything that happens in the tick would happen during the update right and there are a bunch of uh, filler like communicating uh, methods so the these are for when the states need uh, some data from the controller or uh, from the service and this would be used by the states so we'll look at the chest states right now okay so chest state so this is the uh, parent uh, chest state and it's a mono behavior and uh, yeah basic stuff so chest view it has a reference to the chest view and when we are attacking so if you look at one of the chests we look at uh, each chest state is attached to a game object that has a chest view right so that's why we are going for a required component and that chest view is being assigned like reference here and during on state enter we are enabling this uh, particular script and on state exit we are disabling the script 
and finally I have a, a on just click function so every state uh, has a click function right and uh, that's why I've uh, implemented this as a virtual function so it it will be overrided and uh, yeah so finally tick there this both are empty for now so we'll look at just log state so this is the first state so when uh, let's look at controller when we are enabling the chest right so this is when the chest is being created and then it's enabled then the chest view like uh let's go to chest view yeah chest view start we look that uh change chest state is being set to just locked state right so whenever the chest is being created the first state that would be set to is just log state so it has it takes a reference of the log panel from the chest view and time to unlock this time to unlock is uh, obtained from the chest model right. right so yeah that's happening here and then we set the time and set the jump count so set time string is basically when uh, if you look at log uh, basically when you are uh, trying to open the chest we'll receive a pop-up right so for that we need uh, two things set time string and set gem count right so time string I am using it like uh, to make a string so I format a string so this is how I am doing it and the same for gem count so gem count I'm using a seal to int to find the uh, nearest positive value right and uh, if it's zero like if the gem cost tends, turns out to be zero i want it to be one so that's what i'm doing here because sometimes you your chest may take only three minutes but uh this uh, this logic is for when there is like uh 30 minutes or an hour then for each 30 minutes it would take uh what three jumps i guess yeah 30 minutes it would take three jumps and so on so if you have 10 minutes then it would be one jump but if i have less than 10 minutes it would be zero so that's why i'm uh, setting it to one here and then we have on set enter which would uh like set this locked panel to true and on state exit which would uh, set it to false and then i have a bunch of stuff i'll yeah this stuff will be we'll start with on chest click so in on chest click when i'm clicking on the uh lock panel so let's look at here so when I'm clicking on the lock panel, one second. So when I'm clicking on the lock panel, I get a pop-up asking if I want to unlock it for free or unlock it with gems, right? So, <clears throat> so first thing is first, we have to check if any other chest is unlocking, right? And if that is happening, then we can't unlock the chest. And uh, that's what is happening here. So, if no other chest is unlocking, then I can unlock chest. So, that's what is here. Right. So, unlock chest, we look at unlock chest. Uh, invoke, uncheck, confirm, unlock. So, it takes the gem cost and timer. Right. Gem cost and timer is uh, basically we'll set it here. Like I said. So, set time string, set gem count. So, both these variables would be set and that would be used in here. And that's what we are seeing here, right here. So, this string and the uh, integer right and uh, from when i have clicked that and i have uh, enabled the pop-up i have two choices so i can either unlock it for free or unlock it to the gems right and i also have a back choice so basically when i unlock it for free i'll be uh, doing this timer based on lock right so i'll be calling even so i will be invoking this one in the ui and uh, i'll be calling timer based on lock and if i go for gems then i would uh yeah, i would uh invoke this one unlock with gems and this would get called so yeah i'll be ch ch just changing the chest to unlock unlock it. if it's timer if it's gems then i would uh remove that certain amount from the currency removing it would check if it's possible so as i had seen in the currency script so it would see if it's available that amount of currency right here right you see if it's not available then false so if it's false then i would go for invoke on insufficient terms 
that's what we had seen in the first uh, slide. So let me show it to you again. So right now, unlock with gems one insufficient gems, right? So when I click on it, insufficient gems should pop up. So that's what is happening here. But if I do have uh, gems, then it would uh, unlock it immediately. So that's why chest opens it. And uh, that's right here. And if chest is already in queue. So basically, uh, I'll show you the queue as well. So in service, I have a queue data structure. So whenever a chest is being uh, opened, like it is being opened, it would be added to the queue. So right here, add chest to queue, right? And uh, yeah, so when, when we start unlocking a chest, it would be added to a queue. And when, uh, I'll show you the, where is it? Mm, locked, unlocked. Yeah, right here. So enable queue text. So this is what uh, it's showing as in queue. So if I go here, and unlock this, click here, in queue. So this is what enable queue text is. And finally, we have the add chest to queue. So that uh, chest should be added to this uh, queue data structure, All right? And then we have, uh, yeah, then we have the limit for the queue. So I can't uh, do more than two uh, chests in the queue. So that's why we are, before we are adding it to the queue, we are checking if uh, the queue is like, what, not full, right? So if queue is full, then I invoke uh, chest queue let power, right? And if the chest is already in queue, then I invoke the chest is already in queue. So if I click, this is in queue, if I click on it, already in queue. And this, uh, if I click on this, because the queue is already full, the queue is full, right? So that's what is happening in here these three circles and finally I am uh, enabling like enabling the inqueue text and adding this to the queue right? and when the queue uh, empties like uh, when it ends uh, opening right so let's go to locked after lock it's the unlocking state and then it's open state so let's go to So I'll come, I'll do the whole thing later, but when this, like when it just unlocks, because we are in the queue, uh, it's in the queue and when the chest unlocks, so the open state, uh, like open state has uh, entered, right? It has entered the open state and there I would invoke on open next chest in queue. So it would go by the chest and uh, open next chest is queue is called. So if it's, uh, the, if the chest queue is not, uh, if the chest queue is empty, then it will just return. If it is not empty, then I would dequeue a chest controller from the queue and then I would just uh, change the state to unlocking. So that's what is happening. All right, cool. Uh, so we finish uh, lock state, we look at unlock state. So in unlock state, uh, if we go back here, so this is what the unlocking state looks like. So it has an unlock panel, it has a timer, and it has a jump count. So the timer and jump count are pretty similar to what we had seen in uh, log state, but here the timer is like going every frame, right? So we'll just look at that. So tick, right? And it has a bool for timer is running. And if the timer is uh, running, then I just have to update the time and the jump count. So why time and the jump count? So for each, uh, like the jump count differs when the time differs, right? So if there is 30 minutes left, then it would be uh, three gems. And if there is uh, 20, like an hour left, then it would be six gems, right? So that's why uh, update time and gem count. So this is called every frame. And uh, basically I'll select, I'll set, uh, send that display time and find gem cost. And I'll set both of this to the UI. So let's see, display time. Display time, same thing as before. I'm finding the timer and setting it to the text. Uh, and find gem cost. So same thing. Gem cost, set, uh, set and set gem cost, right. So that's basically what's happening in the tick. 
and timer is running is set by on state enter so timer is running is set at, is set to true on state enter and uh, yeah time to unlock is obtained by get time to open chest so that's that starting time right so this would be uh, obtained from the chess model and un uh, unlocking panel set to true chess view set to unlock chest. so this is for uh, uh, this is basically it'll uh, set like the chess service now has uh, uh, something so like we'll just look at this chess service chess controller set chess unlocking process so this this chess service has a bool which would uh, basically uh, it would hold the value like if a chest is already unlocking then it would be true if it is not unlocking then it would be false so this is what is being used in just log state so right here right so if a chest is already unlocking then i can't uh, unlock the chest right and if it's chest is not unlocking any of the chest is not unlocking then i can unlock this particular chest so that's what uh, that is so unlocking state and on set exit i'll be uh, setting that uh, unlocking to false right and then i would set the un un unlocking panel to false so that's basically unlocking state and finally when unlocking state is done we'd go to open state so in unlock state on on chest click i'll be uh, having like i'll show you so this is unlocking set and if i click on it i'll be able to ask if i want to unlock the chest with gems and if click on no so nothing will happen if i click on yes uh right now i am insufficient uh damn it so let's see common yeah so 15 seconds let's see so basically if i click on unlocking chest like uh, if i click on it i'll receive a pop-up saying if i want to uh, unlock it with the gems right so let's take a look at that so oh no okay so no problem uh, if i click on it unlock just with one gems yes or no so if i click on no nothing happens if i click on yes it would go to open state right so that's what is happening here i would uh, invoke this on check confirms gems unlock so this would give that pop-up and uh, two things if i deny and if i confirm if i confirm then uh, unlock just with gems so same as what we had done before right and if i deny then i just unsubscribe right so that's what is happening here and if i have enough gems then lock and if i don't have insufficient right so we'll go to unlock uh in unlock just i'm just setting the timer to unlock zero Time is running to false. Finally, I'm ch change the ch state to open state. So if you go to open state, uh, yeah, so this is basically open state. And in open state, I have a just open panel. And I have uh, basically when I open, and if I click on it, I receive another pop up saying I have received this number of uh, coins and this number of gems. Right. So we'll go to on chest click. And in on chest click, uh, we'll also see that this just is open like. It would look like it's open i'll show it too so right now it's unlocking and if i click on open so it's open right so that's what is happening uh, here so i'm changing the sprite to open image and i'm setting the open panel to false so you won't see that uh, blinking thing right now so that's what i said to false and then chess rewards so chess rewards is basically we'll get the data from the model right chess model and then i would uh, generate a random coin reward and gem reward and then i'll re uh, invoke this pop-up with this number of gems and this number of uh, coins right. right and finally i'll i have only one option here so collect and that's what is uh, being done here so on reward accepted collect rewards so when you go to collect rewards i add this currency the number of coins and number of gems to the currency and then i uh, call chest collector so chest collector would basically it would destroy the chest it would like uh, basically it will destroy chest but in our case because it, we are using uh, a chest pool it would just uh, disable the chest right so i'm setting the parent to null earlier it was parented to the holder right but now i am setting the parent to null 
and I'm ch changing the test state to log state so that the next time it is being used, it would be in log state. And then changing the sprite to the closed image and also disabling the queue text, the in queue text, right? Finally, I'm setting into false. So this is basically the chest states, different states that I've used for each chest. Uh, yeah, the event service. So I have a bunch of events. So everything that's happening with the UI is being uh, communicated through here events, right? So yeah, bunch of events and then object pool scripts. So yeah, so object pool, uh, if you look at just service, then we'll be able to see uh, these four object pools for each state, uh, each just type, right? And uh, for each chest type, I'm storing the chest data from the scriptable object. So when I create, like when I create the chest pool, I'll be sending this through the constructor and storing it in the data. And I have three, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four functions, four main functions. So the two public functions are get item and return item, right? So get item, basically it would, uh, we have a list of uh, items and item is basically contains the chess controller and a variable for if it's being used right and get item would basically go through this list let's see here right here it go through the list and find an item that is not being used and if we found such item then we would just uh, return that type of item if it's not if i have not found an item that is not being used then i would just create a new item and uh, that item i would just return it so create pulled item a uh, new pull item and item i'll create item so in create item i'm creating a new chess controller so that's what is happening here and for the data i'll use the data that i have stored here this is in the constructor and uh, i'm using is used to true because uh, right after creating i'll be using it so it's used to set it true and i'm add, adding this uh, new item to the item pool Finally, we have the return item where we are sending a chess controller saying that, okay, I've used this chess controller uh, and uh, I completed using it. So now I just have to find that particular item in the item pool and set it is used to false. Right? So that's what is happening here. Uh, that's basically, yeah, so that's basically, I guess, all of uh, the script. So I have a mono generic. Uh, like mono singleton or generic singleton and uh, that's what i'm using for event service uh no i'm not using that sorry currency service and uh chess service yeah so that's basically all of my uh code stuff uh yeah so that's basically all all of it i hope you enjoyed this uh Thanks for watching. Bye.